Item number, SCP-426. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. I am to be sealed in a chamber with no windows through which I may be viewed. The door to my chamber must have a label completely unrelated to my designation or identity in order to prevent unintended spread of my primary effect. Only level 3 and above personnel are to know of my presence, and particularly of my properties. Assigned personnel are to be rotated out on a monthly basis to prevent contamination by my secondary effect. Psychiatric evaluation is mandatory at the end of the month. If personnel are deemed unaffected, they may be reassigned to me no less than four months after their last rotation with me. Any affected personnel are to be given a Class C amnestic and transferred to a different site. Description Hello, I am SCP-426. I must be introduced this way in order to prevent ambiguity. I am an ordinary toaster, able to toast bread when supplied with electricity. However, when any human being mentions me, they inadvertently refer to me in the first person. Despite all attempts, there is yet to be a way to speak or write about me in the third person. When in my continuous presence for over two months, individuals begin to identify themselves as a toaster. Unless forcibly restrained, these people will ultimately harm themselves in their attempts to emulate my standard functions. I was discovered in the home of the family after the gruesome deaths of three of its members. I had been given to the younger Mr. and Mrs. as a wedding gift. No card or any other identifying markings had been found on my box. Approximately two months after the family received me, fire crews were dispatched to the home due to an electrical fire. The younger Mrs. died from the electric discharge that she had caused when attempting to devour an electric socket. The other two victims had died shortly before the fire occurred. The elder Mrs. had gorged herself with nearly 10 kilograms of bread before her stomach burst and she died of internal bleeding. The younger Mr. died of severe blood loss after attempting with me. The sole survivor was the elder Mr. who was suffering from severe malnutrition. He stated that he had inserted some bread a week prior and was still waiting for the toast to pop out. I was confiscated by the Foundation after police noted my unusual properties. A Class C amnestic was administered to the affected officers. Experiment Log 426-1 Date Expunged Subject D-Class Personnel D-426-1 Procedure D-426-1 was asked to describe what he believed was contained in my chamber. He was not informed about my identity or properties. Details D-426-1 stated, I'm probably some huge monster holed up in there. That's what you guys have all over the place, right? D-426-1 remained oblivious to his use of the first person pronoun. Experiment Log 426-2 Date Expunged Subject D-Class Personnel D-426-2 Procedure 426-2 was placed in my chamber and given regular meals through a dispenser. No communication with D-426-2 was permitted. Multiple cameras were situated in the chamber, positioned so that I was outside of their field of vision, but allowing constant observation of D-426-2. We remained sealed until my secondary effect manifested in the subject. I was bolted to the floor so that I could not be moved into a camera's view. Details After 45 days of isolation, D-426-2 wrapped his arm around me and began conversing with me, stating that we were brothers. D-426-2 never deviated from using the first person plural when speaking with me. Subject was terminated one hour after this event. It is theorized that the isolation accelerated the progression of my secondary effect. Experiment Log 426-3 Date Expunged Subject D-Class Personnel D-426-3 Procedure A screw was removed from me and shown to D-426-3, who was asked to describe it. 
D-426-3 was not informed about my identity or properties. Details D-426-3 referred to it as my screw. Consistent with Experiment 426-1, the subject was oblivious of his use of the first person in his description. This suggests that, even if I were destroyed, my effects would still be inherent in my remains. Experiment Log 426-4 Date Expunged Subject D-Class Personnel D-426-4 Procedure D-426-4 was placed in isolation, in a cell adjacent to my chamber, to be observed until my secondary effect manifests. Details No effects appeared. D-426-4 was terminated 90 days after the start of the experiment. Thank God there are some limits to my effects. A lot of us were really starting to get worried about me. Dr. C. Item Number SCP-459 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-459 is to be kept unpowered in a standard security locker. The access code is to be changed bi-weekly and known to level 3 and higher personnel. As of 04-15-2000, testing has been indefinitely suspended. Proposals for use should be directed to 05 level personnel. Description SCP-459 appears to be a standard home thermostat. The item is equipped with a small display, four buttons, and two dials on either side of the screen. The two buttons on the right side raise and lower temperature, and the other two appear to affect relative humidity in the area. However, these buttons will only work when both dials are set to the off position. The left dial, dial 1, is marked with several standard weather conditions, including rain, snow, and data expunged. The fourth and fifth positions have been respectively designated T-Storm and Hurricane. The right dial, Dial 2, has different settings, all of which are unmarked. The rightmost positions on each dial are the off positions. SCP-459 can, when wired to a heating and cooling system, modify weather patterns in addition to temperature and humidity. The area of effect appears to be about 1,500 square feet, or about 139 meters squared. The same amount as a modest home. How these effects are produced is currently unknown, as site-wide heating and cooling systems show no abnormalities in the area, even if the temperature is significantly different. Recent testing may suggest SCP-459 can access resources from other planets, and possibly other dimensions. Addendum 459-1 SCP-459 was discovered in a suburban home in after reports from neighbors of loud noises and bright flashes at night. Authorities' first attempts to investigate resulted in attracting the Foundation's attention. A group of agents with standard protection gear cut power to the house and proceeded to retrieve SCP-459 without incident, wherein all agents returned to site with the device. The bodies of the occupants of the home were recovered as well. Cause of death is officially listed as a gas leak. Test Log 459-2 Pre-testing note. The default settings are 20 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity. Dr. Name. Dr. Date. 3-16-2000. Temperature, humidity, weather setting. 20 degrees Celsius. 50%. Dial 1. Snow. Results. After 127 seconds, Rain began to fall in the testing area. Temperature indicated by SCP-459 is confirmed. Weather cleared after 20 minutes. Notes. I thought it would decrease the temperature. Well, I was half right. This is, functionally, ordinary weather and follows the same rules. Doctor Date. 3-16-2000 Temperature. Humidity. Weather setting. 23 degrees Celsius, 75%, dial 1, 4. Results After 47 seconds, 
Dark clouds began to coalesce, followed by moderate rain and occasional thunder. Wind speed inside the testing chamber peaked at 67 kilometers an hour. Weather cleared after 34 minutes. Notes. Nothing particularly unusual, though maybe we should have some weather gear close by next time we test this thing. Doctor. Date. 3-16-2000. Temperature. Humidity. Weather setting. 26 degrees Celsius. 80%. Dial 1. 5. Results. At first, outcome appeared identical to second test, but seven minutes after activation, weather conditions began to sharply deteriorate, with heavy rain and winds reaching up to 162 kilometers an hour, followed by Weather took over two hours to clear up. Site-wide brownouts reported. Notes. Let's not try that again. While watching a handful of sopping wet researchers being blown around a test chamber is, in retrospect, hilarious. My assistant getting electrocuted and the risk of site-wide containment failure put a bit of a damper on the whole thing. Dr. Date. 3-24-2000 Temperature. Humidity. Weather setting. 20 degrees Celsius. 50%. Dial 2. Leftmost position. Results. After five minutes of inactivity, Dr. exited the test chamber due to a spontaneous nosebleed. At seven minutes and 32 seconds after activation, a breeze began to blow throughout the room, increasing in speed very rapidly. After which, the view was obscured by large amounts of unidentified red material data expunged. Sensors clocked the wind speed at 428 kilometers an hour before they were destroyed. Data expunged. Entire east wing locked down. Weather did not subside for a week after the incident, and further testing was suspended until the test chamber could be fully inspected and repaired. Inspection of the chamber showed large quantities of ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and other chemical compounds known to make up Jupiter's atmosphere. Notes. Was that the red spot? Dr. Date. 415, 2000. Temperature, humidity, weather setting. 20 degrees Celsius, 50%. Dial 2, one turn from leftmost position. Results. D-Class personnel adjusted the device accordingly. After 742 seconds, data expunged. All further testing suspended indefinitely. Notes. It took three weeks to get the thing back, but it's completely undamaged. It's possible we could use this thing to help recreate natural environments for certain Earth-native animal SCPs. Dr. Item Number SCP-495 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-495 is to be kept in a locked room plugged into a standard active 120-volt power outlet when not in use. A life-sized mold of a clam, oyster, or other species of sessile bivalve is to be stored within SCP-495. The mold is to contain no more than 100 grams of wax. Note: Personnel are reminded that not all bivalves are sessile. In the event of the mold being destroyed, consult with an on-staff malacologist before obtaining a replacement. In the event of a power failure, at least one Level 1 security personnel must enter the storage room and monitor the item for activity until power is restored. Researchers wishing to use SCP-495 must submit a written description of the planned experiment to Dr. Due to the results of experiment SCP-495, all molds and materials must be approved by at least one Level 3 or higher personnel before use with SCP-495. At least one personnel with experience treating venomous bites and stings must be available on standby while SCP-495 is in use. Description SCP-495 appears to be the oven from a 1992 Toy Max Creepy Crawlers playset, save that the Creepy Crawlers logo sticker has been replaced with the logo from a 1964 Mattel Thingmaker hot plate a toy of virtually identical function to the more recent Toymax version. 
discontinued by Mattel in the 1970s due to insufficient safety features. While SCP-495 is plugged into a standard 120-volt power outlet, it functions as a normal creepy crawler's oven. When not plugged into a power outlet, SCP-495 displays the following anomalous behavior. Upon insertion of a filled or partially filled mold, SCP-495's activation switch moves to the on position automatically. The internal heating lamp appears to remain unlit, but the oven begins to gain warmth from an unknown source, reaching a peak internal temperature of 257.2 degrees Celsius, as measured by infrared camera. After approximately 8 minutes, SCP-495's activation switch moves to the off position automatically. Contrary to the behavior of a standard Toymax Creepy Crawler oven, SCP-495's door will open immediately, instead of remaining locked while the mold cools. All molded items will animate upon removal from the oven, behaving as though they were natural organisms. Animated objects are physically detailed well beyond what their molds would seem to allow, appearing physically identical to their natural counterparts save for unusual coloration corresponding to the materials used to fill their molds. Dissection of animated objects reveals tissues and other internal structures composed entirely of whatever material was used to fill the mold. Any substance and mold used with SCP-495 will produce results. Handmade molds are substances other than Toymax or Mattel plastic goop, such as chocolate or wax, will result in animate objects. Addendum just because they're made of plastic doesn't mean they're safe. Where the venom comes from, I don't know. But Agent is now in the infirmary after being bitten by a tiny purple asp. Please treat the products of SCP-495 as you would any venomous animal. Dr. Item Number SCP-512 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-512 is held within the Site-77 Safe Object Repository. It is to be shut at all times, and testing during adverse weather conditions is forbidden. All outdoor testing proposals must be reviewed by Security Chief Anderson. Description SCP-512 is a stainless steel black umbrella with a nylon canopy and polished ebony crook handle. Maximum radius of canopy when open is 0.75 meters. Make and manufacture are unknown. A taped patch is visible on the canopy section. When open and pointed upward, SCP-512 exerts an upwards force in opposition to Earth's gravity in a roughly dome-shaped area directly above itself, with a cross-sectional area of roughly 1.77 meters squared. Precipitation and other objects will be suspended and deflected within this area of effect. SCP-512 has no effect when closed, or when held at a horizontal angle. Despite SCP-512's efficacy against normal precipitation, it is inadvisable to use the object during severe weather. Through an as yet unknown process, the item's anomalous effect causes the air above it to become extremely ionized. This interaction also causes electrical current to greatly increase in amperage while in direct contact with the item. This causes the threat of direct lightning strikes to become exceptionally dangerous to any individual holding SCP-512, as evidenced through the death of its original owner, as well as D-5233. Additionally, electrical current appears to travel across the surface of SCP-512, causing little to no damage to the item's structure. SCP-512 was recovered from a public park in Florida. Local emergency services had been summoned to evacuate the area due to reports of unusual lightning strikes. SCP-512 was discovered caught on a street lamp and fully opened, with evidence of several lightning strikes in the immediate area. Its handle was noted to be covered in ash. Foundation personnel intervened after local newspapers began reporting on SCP-512's anomalous properties. Addendum Testing Summary Upon recovery, SCP-512 underwent standard testing, through which its properties were determined. A range of items were held 4 meters above SCP-512 and then dropped, after which 
a mechanical apparatus would open SCP-512. Tested items include the following. One liter of purified water, dumped from a standard bucket. One liter of orange juice from concentrate. Approximately one kilogram of loose feathers. One kilogram of ice cubes. The assorted contents of junior researcher Renfield's bag to lunch. A standard running shoe. A standard watermelon. SCP-1108. A 5.4 kilogram bowling ball. A 40 kilogram steel containment crate. Testing materials slowed in descent approximately 0.5 seconds after SCP-512 opened, with the larger and less solid items coming to a stop approximately 0.35 meters from SCP-512's surface. All material will remain suspended in the air, unless made to slide to one side and resume freefall. Liquids and particulate matter are weakly repelled from the center of the effect, while more solid objects can be held in place with minor adjustments to SCP-512's angle. Addendum Experiment D-5233 Testing Item D-Class Personnel Testing Procedure Object taken to Site-77 Outdoors Field for testing of the vertical distance of the anti-gravity effect. An unexpected severe storm occurred during testing, and the rain repelled properties of SCP-512, coupled with exceptionally low pressure, caused a suction effect in the region directly above the object. SCP-512 pulled the D-Class, D-5233, holding it upward into the air and drifted on prevailing wind currents. D-5-1233 was able to hold on to SCP-512 as it rapidly gained altitude. D-5-1233 glided over Site-77 perimeter and into the surrounding area. It was observed that D-5-1233 quickly developed skill in altering angle of anti-gravity effect to allow for semi-controlled flight. A helicopter was launched to pursue object and D-5-1233. The object was recaptured following a lightning strike. D-5-1233's remains were not recovered. Item Number SCP-520 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-520-1 and 2 are to be stored in an inanimate item containment locker with standard positive action defenses. Each object's handle is to remain perpendicular to its base. The handles and contacts must be secured with sturdy clamps made of insulating material. POI-520-A and POI-520-B are to remain in Foundation custody. As long as they do so voluntarily, they are to be accommodated comfortably without communications access. All electrical devices in each POI suite should be checked weekly for damage or modification. Should POI-520-A and POI-520-B agree to meet, they are permitted one hour of face-to-face -face or video conference time per week. Testing is currently suspended. See Incident 52016. Description SCP-521 and SCP-522 are large quadruple knife switches constructed from wood, ceramic, and copper. A single unlabeled dial is mounted in SCP-522's base and a 48-character LED display is connected across its input contacts with insulated alligator clips. When connected to an electrical circuit, SCP-521 does not function normally to break or complete the circuit to which it is connected. Instead, it splices itself, briefly and remotely, into the primary power circuit of one randomly selected electrical device within 10 meters. Moving the handle from the on to the off position breaks the power circuit while moving it from off to on completes the circuit, regardless of any other switches or current interrupters. Interruption or completion of the circuit is permanent. Wires are physically broken, fuses bypassed, and switches shorted out. The surface of metal connections formed or broken by SCP-521 bears signs of extreme oxidation, often to a chemically implausible extent. SCP-522 functions like SCP-521 but its targets are selected randomly only from electronic devices inside its active zone that are members of its current selection class. The active zone's current radius is displayed on the left side of the LED display. 
It may be set to any value between 5 meters and 2500 kilometers, using the dial and the object's base. The selection class is a subset of electrical devices, specified by a brief English phrase. See Addendum 526 for examples. The active selection class appears in the center of SCP-521's LED display, with a counter of remaining activations on the right. Each class is applied to exactly 10 operations, before a new one is chosen at random. If there are no members of the selection class inside the active zone, the counter does not decrement until a suitable device can be affected. Over 680 pages of assorted hard copy documentation were recovered with SCP-520. They included eight technical papers on anomalous electrical engineering topics, two complete sets of construction diagrams for SCP-521, one annotated by hand to roughly resemble SCP-522, a set of meticulous step-by-step -step instructions for building a copy of SCP-521, written in the second person, and sprinkled with personal and cultural references, and extensive handwritten notes on the process of constructing and modifying an SCP-520 instance. The retrieved notes end abruptly part way through debugging an attempt to add programmable target type specificity. Most handwriting in the documentation belongs to POI-520B, with occasional notes in POI-520A's hand. Many of the notes refer to an ongoing correspondence by phone and email, records of which have not yet been retrieved. Addendum 521B SCP-520 Related Persons of Interest POI-520A is Sylvia Lynn, a 23-year-old human female formerly living in Syracuse, New York. She holds a recent Bachelor's of Engineering in Electrical Engineering and claims proficiency in electronics manufacture, including certain anomalous techniques. She claims to have built SCP-522 with assistance from POI-520B and professes considerable concern for POI-520B as a friend and mentor. She is largely cooperative with Foundation requests, but remains reluctant to attempt to build new anomalous devices. POI-520B is Esther Pachaska, a 77-year-old human female born in Prague, Czech Republic, and formerly living in Utica, New York. She is a retired electrical engineer with an established history of building anomalous electrical devices. She claims to have designed SCP-521, written the manuals and diagrams retrieved with the object, and provided the designs and documentation to POI-520A as part of a long-distance mentor-student relationship. Since containment, she has expressed no desire to contact POI-520A. Shortly before being contained by the Foundation, POI-520B suffered minor ischemic brain damage as a result of pacemaker failure, with symptoms including partial retrograde amnesia. By studying her and POI-520A's notes since their containment, she has largely recovered her skills in electrical engineering. However, she claims confusion at the anomalous portions of the SCP-520 documentation, including her own writing, and is sharply skeptical of the basic principles described therein. Addendum 526 Sample Selection Classes The following device selection classes, in reverse chronological order, have been observed since SCP-520 came into Foundation custody. Fluorescent Ceiling Light Doorbell Honda Accord Power Steering Library Fire Alarm Neonatal Ventilator Synchrotron Safety Control Rod Activation Mechanism Pacemaker Incident 52016. On 514 2016, researchers conducting routine experiments activated SCP 522 11 times. The first 10 activations affected Foundation owned fluorescent lamps without incident. The 10th activation also changed the selection class to Boeing 747 Aileron Actuator. Since no aircraft were present in the effect radius, researchers took the opportunity to test SCP 522's function in the absence of suitable targets. When the switch was activated for the eleventh time, however, researchers noted only slight stiffness in the handle. Later examination showed that the force applied to move SCP-522's handle was first diverted to adjust its effect radius selection dial and enlarge the active zone. Simultaneously, Contus Flight 
was lost near Perth, with all 532 passengers and crew. Foundation assets embedded with crash investigators successfully retrieved the airplane's relevant hydraulic flight control systems, and confirmed all four aileron actuators to have been disabled by SCP-520. All testing with SCP-520 has been suspended, pending development of an alternate method of changing the object's selection class. Item Number SCP-594 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-594 is kept at Bioresearch Sector located on 54 kilometers squared of mountainous rangeland, located 35 kilometers from Alaska. Officially, Sector is listed as a munitions factory and testing facility. The perimeter fences and access gates are monitored remotely at all times, with two Level 2 guards posted at each gate in eight-hour shifts. All fencing enclosed paddocks have static dischargers placed at two centimeter intervals. Main research enclosure and pens are to be cleaned on a daily basis to avoid buildup of excrement and allow for necessary repairs. Due to possible electrocution hazard, the following procedures are to be observed when interacting with SCP-594. All metallic items and electrical devices, including wristwatches and jewelry, must be removed and placed within provided plastic containers prior to donning protective gear. Prior to entering paddock, staff are advised to wear at minimum Tesla armor, heavy-duty work gloves, ear protection, goggles, and rubber-soled boots. Also, staff are advised to keep on hand tobacco products, specifically skull-style chewing tobacco or pipe tobacco, candies, dried fruit, or good quality alcohol as a treat for 5941. Holding pens and fences are to be kept properly maintained at all times. Wool of mature adults, two years and older, is to be kept shorn to a length of two millimeters by ceramic shears twice yearly and bailed in anti-static bags with strict adherence to guidelines set out in document number 594S. Under no circumstances are shears with electrical motors to be used for shearing. Exceptions are 5941 and 5942, who are to be rude, loose wool plucked out by hand, as per guidelines under document number 5941-2A, and no attempts at shearing be made on either animal. Due to the nature of SCP-594, specifically 5942, all personnel with contact to SCP-594 and its byproducts may be subject to full cavity searches, and all personnel must submit to pat-down search and metal detector scan before leaving the enclosure. Feeding of the approved formulated grain hay mix, outlined in document number 594F, is to be done twice daily, with fresh water and mineral licks made readily available around all parts of the enclosure. Foraging and grazing outside of regular feedings are to be carefully monitored. Description Discovered in the Altai Mountains during a routine fact-finding mission, SCP-594 is a flock of feral sheep of an unknown breed, resembling a wild Argali sheep in general build, with a thick fleece like that of a domestic merino, around 135 centimeters at the shoulder, and weighing 195 kilograms on average. Gestation and reproductive cycles are similar to most domesticated sheep, with ewes reaching sexual maturity at six to eight months of age, and rams at four to six months. They enter a rut twice annually, typically in late spring and early autumn, but breeding can occur year-round. Most ewes give birth to a single lamb or twins, with triplets being exceedingly rare. 2% of all recorded births to date. The only documented case of triplets which survived to full maturity is 5941 and his siblings, 5942 and 5943. General coloration ranges from pure white to dark blue-gray wool, with a metallic sheen appearing once they've reached full maturity, typically two years of age. Only three animals, the aforementioned triplets, display atypical wool colors. Both sexes have horns, 
with uncastrated males having spiraling horns measuring 190 centimeters in length, the largest documented span belonging to 5942, at a length of 247.4 centimeters. Females and weathers have curved horns, measuring 20 centimeters. The horns, hooves, and wool of older animals have unusually high concentrations of ferrous metals, along with traces of gold alloys. Examinations of newly butchered animals have revealed that SCP-594 skeleton also has large amounts of ferrous metals present within the bone matrix. The sheep are highly aggressive and territorial in nature, and often attack unfamiliar personnel without warning or provocation. They will continue to behave in this manner until steps are taken to properly placate 5941, which is normally done by giving it treats, such as tobacco or candies. Once this is done, the flock will become docile and behave like normal domestic sheep. The exceptions to this pacifying behavior are 5942 and 5943, as outlined in the addendum on each. In contrast to adults, lambs typically are very easy to handle and display curiosity towards new objects and people in the paddock, often attempting to play with personnel, but will flee if threatened. The sound of a panicked lamb will cause nearby adults to attack violently, so caution is to be taken not to spook lambs. Lambs also show a tendency to form attachments to certain humans, often following them around the paddock and begging for food or attention. This is especially noticeable among bottle-reared lambs. Such attachments often last even after sheep has reached maturity as seen in the case of 5942 and Dr. Merriweather. At present, the flock numbers 1,314 mature sheep, plus 448 lambs and immature sheep, with selective culling of unwanted animals annually after the rutting season, to maintain these numbers. The only animals exempt from culling are 5941, 5942, and 5943 or any lambs exhibiting similar traits. Deviation from the 1314-448 pattern for more than a year's time will cause all mature rams to data expunged. Failure to follow the pattern for two years during preliminary research resulted in the deaths of D-class personnel and researchers, as well as near breach of containment by 5942. The defining characteristic of the sheep is that they are able to generate a substantial amount of static electricity simply by the friction caused during daily activities. The resultant charge is typically discharged at random, with mature specimens producing arc flashes that have been recorded at 1,000 amps or more. Due to the electrocution hazard, personnel interacting with SCP-594 are advised to follow guidelines fully outlined in Document 5944-H. When faced with a threat, the flock will become highly agitated, and mature ewes will attempt to form a ring around any lambs, rubbing their bodies together to generate an even greater static charge between them. Because this defensive behavior is especially pronounced when ewes are birthing, it is standard procedure to isolate all pregnant ewes and newborn lambs from the rest of the flock until a week after birthing. In addition to defense against predators, Rams also appear to use their discharges as a type of dominance display, with the older and stronger rams able to produce more powerful discharges during their dance. When in rut, rams will fight against themselves, performing the stomping dances prior to engaging rivals. These dances are often accompanied by excessive discharges, resulting in a rapid ionization of air and giving SCP-594 its local name. Thunder Sheep. Ground sensors have also detected telluric currents during these dances, with older rams creating extremely complicated patterns that often resemble data expunged. Free Martins, ewes which are behaviorally masculine and lack functional ovaries, will also perform stomping dances, but the patterns produced, while equally as complicated, show a marked difference from those created by rams. To date, weathers have not been observed to engage in this behavior. Another trait exhibited by SCP-594 is an inherent ability to
who walk on air, or more accurately, levitate themselves at a distance on average of 2 to 4 meters vertically via manipulation of electromagnetic fields. Lambs and younger animals have a tendency to lose control mid-flight, often falling from high cliffs, which can result in death of the animal. This may be the way the flock called out weaker animals in the wild, but more research is needed. Research has been done on the properties of SCP-594 wool, milk, meat, and horn. Results of these tests are pending full documentation. However, the meat, milk, and resultant dairy products have proven to be fit for human consumption. Approval to include thunder mutton and various cheeses made from the milk of SCP-594 in the Foundation's standardized menu is still pending. Data Pending Lesson Complete To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.